Beating the Ice Golem is so hard, and I hate this dungeon. But I figured out one of the keys to victory that I don't think a lot of other content creators are sharing with you. So let's break that down in this video. Uh, I think I need to change my, my setup here a little bit. Let's run the intro and I'll get everything situated. What's up guys, MTG Jedi here, and there we go. My uh, framing just got like a little bit off. If I change like the size of the game when I'm playing it, then it sort of messes it up for, for recording. Um, weird, that's a sell. Okay, so Ice Golem, right? There's an Ice Golem tournament going on right now, but I've been doing a lot of work on my Ice Golem team, and there's a secret that I figured out. So let's run this back and just watch it play through here. So we have double bad Elkazar, which I know that what you're thinking right now is, man, this team is so not relatable to me. But, you know, there are a fair bit of players who have these type of champions. And so if you do uh, have them and you're interested in speed runs, then this could be the comp for you. Now... I, what I don't have is Eurogram, the new epic. Despite pulling a lot of void shards this past weekend, I could not open that guy. Many other people did. I opened him for so many different players, but I could not open him for myself. Otherwise, maybe he'd be in this video. But I've been really working on this team a lot because I want to be able to run Ice Golem. I really do. There's resistance gear in here, there's reflex gear, um, and some other sets that I wouldn't mind trying out as well, but you need to actually have a really strong team to beat Ice Golem 25, let alone have a good time. But you can see here, like, my time's not going to be too bad, but we'll go over my champions here, and I'll tell you what the secret is, okay? The secret is less damage and more poison, okay? The reason why the two bad L's are in the team is because they put up the two poisons. And obviously they heal the team as well, you know? So Seer is there to clear the waves. Renegade is there to reset the cooldowns. Lydia goes along with all of that. And the bad L's are there for the poisons. Because poison does not trigger is passive okay this um counter attack and revive whenever it drops below these different hp thresholds it doesn't trigger unless you're doing a big amount of damage if you're dropping below those thresholds with poisons it doesn't work so lydia has war master here um, and Seer can do a lot of damage, but Seer's job is to die. Seer's job is to get through the waves and then die on the boss so she doesn't take up time or risk the run. And since I've switched over the gear on one of my bad L's, and since I have switched the masteries on them, this has been a crazy better, better team. Okay? So, number one, you want to poison the Ice Golem. You want to poison the Ice Golem. That seems odd to me, but that's what you want to do. Now, on your Poisoners, here are the Masteries that you want to run. And this is so important. You want to run Oppressor. And I do not run this Mastery on any other champion other than Poisoners or um, Ice Golem and maybe Dragon. Like, I, I can do the Bad L. The same, this same team can, can run Dragon as well. So um, uh, we could show that in addition, but the, the goal of the video here was Ice Golem, okay? Because it's going to continue to fill their turn meter for all the poisons that they place. So if you're replacing Bad L with Eurogram, you're going to put this. If you're replacing him with somebody else who's not as good, Bad L and Eurogram are the two best. Um, Tomb Lord would be good as well. But uh, Tomb Lord's in a bad spot because of the affinity on 25 is blue. Um, I found out that the hard way, but you know, it's all good. So these masteries, I've really been loving them. 
you get a little bit of counterattacking. You get the accuracy and the healing. You get the speed for when your other champions die. And you can see that I have the same masteries on both. Okay, same masteries on both. Now, all my champions in this team are booked. Okay, and I have this bad L is a little bit more tanky. But this one, I couldn't get to those same stats. So um, somebody in my Twitch chat, I apologize for not remembering who, gave me the suggestion to put them in Stalwart. And that was another huge part of the success of this team. Putting a bad L in Stalwart and then also changing the Masteries. Before, I had the same kind of Masteries as on Lydia, which you need to move here. So on Lydia, we had the War Master, okay? But that War Master does a lot of damage. And so then that kept triggering the passive and kept killing me. <laughs> it kept killing me and I kept wiping. But uh, since then, let's come back over here. Since then, changing that, I haven't yet to lose a fight. I have yet to lose one of those. So um, full stats on Lydia here. I have her at 259, so she goes before everybody else. Um, tanky as well, good accuracy, and a little bit of crit stats so she can do a little bit of damage. Bad L in Stalwart, 44k HP, 3300 defense, 255 speed, and then resistance and accuracy. Bad L number two, very similar stats, a little bit more HP. Um, resistance and accuracy, not quite as high as what I would have liked. Seer is missing her shield. Oof. Um, who did I put her shield on? That is very important to me. I know exactly who it is. Exactly who it is. It is sitting right here because I was testing Tumisia in the, one of this other week's, uh, this week's other videos. And I borrowed Seer's shield. So I'm surprised. Even without that shield, we must have got lucky on the crits for the waves. Uh, but anyway, here is Seer's normal stats. A lot of HP, which I really love. Some defense. Crit rate. Crit damage. Accuracy. All in Savage gear. Paired with Immortal. Okay. My Renegade, I took to 60 for my Doom Tower team. You can still run her at 50. This is more of an endgame build for her in with two buffs here one in divine life for the little shield one in immunity and that's extra buffs for seer to eat uh her stats i tried to make her as defensive as possible with some hp as well and then i made her speed tuned with my team um as well as the accuracy to land her decreased speed which is actually very good but remember to sum it up if you skip to the end of the video the key here is this mastery tree coming down to Oppressor. Also, you need really crazy tanky stats. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed this quick video of the secret to Ice Golem. I'm MTG Jedi. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you in the